<laughs> Whenever the socio-political situation in South Africa is covered in the news, it is almost always framed within a black versus white narrative. As someone with a fair amount of experience in that particular industry, I believe this is done deliberately because it's an ugly fact of human nature that tales of hatred and conflict sell more papers and get more clicks than stories of reconciliation. My goal with this video is to shed light on some things that journalists choose not to report because they lack political and financial incentive to do so. Upon returning home from training last night, my cousin and I got into a conversation with the security officer assigned to protect our neighborhood. For those of you who may be unaware, this country has one of the largest private security industries in the world and almost everyone who can afford it employs one company or another to monitor their homes. When traveling at night, we always summon an armed escort to accompany us back onto our property to ensure that we are not ambushed while I move from the car to my wheelchair, which has happened before. Because I attend Taekwondo twice weekly, all the officers on our rotation have come to know us quite well. Last night, our discussion turned to South Africa's future and the officer who, like many in his position, is a black man, seemed despondent as he said, this government is corrupt. All they want to do is take land and money. You see, our leaders, with whom the local media is in many ways complicit, are fond of laying all the blame for this country's ills on the backs of white people. They do so for a number of reasons, the ultimate being an attempt to shift the focus away from their own greed and ineptitude. Ordinary people are smarter than the politicians think, however, and it's no longer so easy to bait people into the trap of unquestioning racial dogma. As a man who puts his life at risk every time he goes to work, the officer who guaranteed our safety last night knows very well that if our ruling party, the African National Congress, is allowed to push through with its authoritarian schemes, they will only result in further suffering. Another aspect of South African life that those beyond our borders might not realize is that our population cannot simply be divided into black and white. There are other ethnic groups here as well. One of the most vibrant and close-knit is our Indian community. In this context, Indian does not mean the same thing as the now controversial term for Native Americans. It refers to South African citizens of actual Indian descent. The first Indians arrived during the Dutch colonial era as slaves, and they have existed here as a distinct group for over 150 years. As time passed, more Indians arrived to serve as indentured labor on the sugar plantations which my home province of KwaZulu-Natal is known for. Under apartheid, they were subject to the same discrimination as other non-whites, yet were still able to develop 
businesses and thrive economically. I bring this up because one of my oldest friends is Indian. We were schoolmates and have known each other for nearly two decades. And when he visited me a couple weeks back, he expressed the same fear that I feel. If the African National Congress, or worse still, the radical Marxist economic freedom fighters are allowed to come after whites, it won't be long before their wrath is turned on Indians. In fact, EFF leader Julius Malema recently caused further unrest when he claimed that the majority of Indians are racist. So you see, the current political rhetoric is not just a push to eliminate white people, but anyone who doesn't fall in line with the black elite. This is not about race, it's about power. I made this video because I strongly believe that people should have a better understanding of South African stories, which the mainstream media, local and international, does not provide. If you are a fan of my content, then please share and recommend it to those around you. And if you are able, consider supporting me directly via PayPal. For now, farewell.